Born to run, baby. Born to run. Welcome to the De Leon. Well, hello, slot car fans. This is Rob De Leon with the De Leon Slot Car Raceway. And today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to show you some of the modeling that I've been doing over the last couple of years. There's even a couple of models in here from a few decades ago. But I wanted to kind of show you an idea of what I've been doing before I got to the slot car hobby. And so uh, let's go into a couple of these and see what we've got. So let's start off with this MPC Dragster. This is called the Yellow Feather, driven by Don Perdome. There is also a matched counterpart driven by Tom McEwen that's blue. I haven't built that one yet. But this one here has a clear lacquer over a lacquer base coat of yellow. I like to bury my decals underneath the clear. Here you can see a little bit of detail on the car. Panels come apart. Forgive me for all the dust that's on these models. I really didn't have a whole lot of time to dust them. I did as best as I could, but you dust these kind of things too much and you start breaking parts off of them. So you can see that I did not plumb the engine. That's something that I wish I would have done, but oh well, you know, looks good the way it is. But uh, I did this one a few years ago. And let's move on to the next kit. Up next, we have this AMT Myers Manx buggy. I built this a few years ago for a model contest I did at the local club. And it came out pretty nice. This is a lacquer paint job. It's lacquer clear over some lacquer Toyota Garnet Red. I usually use Duplicolor Perfect Match Paint. And I actually had to paint this one twice because the first time I painted it, um, I put the decals on and the decals got stuck and twisted around on me and I could not fix them. By the time I ended up getting the decals off, the paint started pulling off and I had to take the whole thing apart, dunk it in a vat of brake fluid and pull all the paint off. So it took me a little bit longer, but it came out pretty nice. I do like it. I made the uh, custom roll bar in the back to go through the uh, seats. I had a friend who had a car just like this and that's kind of how his roll bar went. And then I did my own custom tire on this. This is not the back tire that comes with the car. And so I found another tire that worked a lot better. So there is the Myers Manx. And let's move on. In sticking with the VW theme, I built this car about 20 years ago. And I don't even remember what color of paint it was, but I wanted something that kind of looked like a modern VW that would have been built back in the 2000s. And uh, so Obviously, these are not the stock wheels. These are the uh, wheels and tires from Pegasus. And then I did kind of a custom engine with a single dual Weber. Actually, that would be a dual DeLorto, maybe dual Weber carburetor. And then I rounded the top of the fan shroud off to make it look kind of like an old Porsche 912 fan shroud. And then I did a custom uh, loop roll bar, and that was about it. And so this one kind of just sits in my collection the tires are starting to crack on it and stuff but it's an old kit and we're going to move on now here this is a 1970 dodge charger i think this is an amt kit if i'm not mistaken and i did this one i would say about maybe 10 years ago i don't remember what kind of paint i used but you see there's the engine did not plumb this one as well uh, the wheels and tires are custom wheels and tires from Pegasus Hobbies. And then you can see all the chrome trim. That is done with a substance called uh, real metal foil. Actually, no. It's called bare metal foil. And you can highlight all the chrome trim and stuff on the car. So, car looks pretty nice. I just, every time I touch it, I get fingerprints all over it. So... But anyway, um, let's move on. And this is an AMT Custom 40 Willys pickup. And this model kit actually comes with two kits in one. You can either build a pickup or you can build the coupe. And so I chose to do the pickup here. It's a gasser style. And it's also painted with a charcoal metallic paint by Duplicolor. It's called Perfect Match. And then I buried the decals uh, with a bunch of clear on top and uh, the paint job came out pretty decent. You can see here I was experimenting doing my first 
header bluing. And so that's what you see all the yellow and the red and the blue there on the headers, trying to mimic what a pair of chrome headers would look like once the heat got to them. Or they call them sometimes they call it heat stained. But um, this one came out pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. Funny story on this car is I had finished it and as I was working in my garage, somebody's stray pit bull came into the garage and scared the hell out of me and I knocked the truck off of the workbench onto the floor into a bunch of parts. So I had to rebuild it. Now this is a 1965 El Camino that I built for a special contest for our model club and it was to see who can build the best looking sleeper and so that's what it is. You can see here how I painted with acrylic paint to give it that flat finish and then I oxidized the paint by fogging in some white so you can see the bed is still the original color because it wouldn't get sun because the cap is on it like that but um, it's a pretty cool car I like the stock steelies and let's see if we can go ahead and take a look at the interior uh, I did the interior like those old cars of the 60s where they had that metallic sort of uh, sparkly material in vinyl wanted to really stand out and the engine's nothing special, just basically a small block Chevy. I didn't plumb this one either, uh, but I did blue the headers a little bit, so you can see the heat staining right there. And that was about it. And here is an MPC kit 1967 Dodge Charger. And this one also is painted in lacquer. This is a lacquer clear coat over a lacquer base of metallic gold. I think this is a GM color actually. And this is also done with that perfect match uh, duplicolor paint. And so I really like the way this one turned out. I lowered the body a little bit onto the chassis to kind of give it a little more aggressive look and kind of did the drag style rather than like the custom or the lowrider version. So there it is. I'm just going to go ahead and put that hood back on. Usually I leave these loose so I can have them closed or opened or whatever. And we move on to the next car. And here is a really famous company out of the Ukraine. I believe the company's building and, and factory and facilities got damaged in the war. But they make some spectacular kits. And you can see here I put this one on a homemade little vignette. I achieved the little cobblestones by taking the bristles out of a brush and then punching them into a surface that I created with foam, uh, baking soda, and glue. And kind of makes it look like an old street, maybe a street down in New York. And then I created a little manhole cover out of foam as well. Uh, the model kit is an ICM uh, Model T fire engine and I painted this one in various colors of lacquer and it started to ex experiment with wood grain as well. My goal with building all these models was try to learn a new technique or learn something new with each build and so this one had a lot of weathering on it and I did the pinstriping in gold on the fenders with a pen that was pretty tough uh, the model has a lot of detail. It's a very delicate model, but uh, this company makes a lot of cool kits from the 20s and 30s, and their, uh, their take on American vehicles is amazing. I mean, it is completely spot on. And so anyway, I did this one for a contest for my club. We eventually didn't have the contest because COVID hit and we stopped meeting. Now you can see the model kit has a lot of dust on it that I've got to clean up, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to show you right here. You can see the weather on the tires, make it look like they're not completely clean. And uh, that's really about it. So this one here is actually a slot car. This is one of my drag cars. It's uh, built on a 124th scale. I believe this is a Revell snap together new beetle kit. And I put a custom interior in by, I believe that's Caveman Interiors. And I built that custom wing on the back and cut the decals myself with my 
vinyl plotter and then added the decals one color at a time as well as the numbers, the gumball insides. And as you can see, it's got uh, Hoosiers in the front. I actually ordered Hoosiers for the rear tires as well, but they actually sent me Eagles. And there's the chassis I built. It's just a soldered together chassis. And I usually like to paint my chassis with some uh, black epoxy paint. And that's basically it. You can see the uh, little decals I did up front here, the signals, that's all vinyl. And the paint again is an actual, it's an actual Dodge color. And it's kind of an off-white, just like the real Herbie. And it's also been cleared. So these decals are actually vinyl decals, not water slides, so they sit on top of the paint. Um, and this actual car won a race for me one time, so that's pretty cool. So this is a kit I did for the local fair. This is a scene, obviously, from Empire Strikes Back. It features the AT, at that's going to fall into the snow after the snow speeder wraps the cable around the legs. And this is a Bandai kit that I picked up a few years ago. And uh, the snow was actually created by mixing baking soda, Elmer's glue, and white paint. Um, the cable that it's wrapped around is a wire that I made. It doesn't. The kit doesn't come like that. I just thought up that idea, and so did a lot of other people that bought this particular kit. And you can see, if you look close up, it's got a lot of weathering, and I tried to uh, go back and look at the movie scenes to see where the snow was being caught at. Anyway, it's a pretty cool model. I love it. You can see a little blast damage there. And uh, that's about it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next model. If you enjoy 135th scale military models, stay tuned. I've got a few to show you. So this one here is the 135th scale Tamiya Jeep MB. And uh, here you can see a little bit of detail. I actually didn't put any paint on this one except for um, I used a flat varnish over the actual molded plastic because I like the way that that green already looked. And then I did some weathering and this is the car that sits on my slot car track so the soldier just sits there and watches the races. Came out really nice though, I'm really happy with it. And we're gonna move on and let's take a look at the Panzer II. This is one of the first tanks I did a few years back where I really cut my teeth on the weathering process. Um, this one here I believe it won an award and so uh, I did some work here in the tracks and on the wheels, trying to make it look as authentic as I can. If you're still with me and you're still interested, we're going to take a look at my military stuff. And this is a Panzerwerfer truck. This one here is the rocket launcher truck. It's a half track. And uh, you'll see extensive weathering, and I gave it a camouflage look. One of the rockets actually got taken off by my dog and he ran over I guess he went under the bed with it and chewed it up so I had to make another rocket uh, to fill in the uh, missing rocket but uh, it's a very cool kit very delicate and it had a warp to it that I had to work with a long time to try to get that warp out so there it is and let's move on to the next vehicle and here is the Tamiya 135th scale Hanomag. And this is a troop transport half track. And you can see the uh, weathered paint. I usually use uh, Walmart acrylic paints thinned with water out of my airbrush. And before I paint the actual color, I'll go through the, uh, all the corners and lines and I will do what they call a modulation with black paint to sort of build in the shadows and stuff that's going to happen. This one also came warped and it took a lot to get this vehicle back into shape. But that's it and let's go to the next one. And this is an old Timia kit I built a few years ago. I believe they call this the Krupp Protz and it's a six-wheeled truck from Germany and it featured a 3.3 liter flat four engine, similar to a Volkswagen. I think it produced about 50 to 55 horsepower. 
And this is where I started to experiment with vignettes, the little diorama piece. And you can see on the inside, there's a lot of stowage. That's kind of cool. I like when models have a lot of stuff you can look at. You can really go to town on the details. And so that's a cool truck. And here's the bottom of it. I try to make the undercarriage as close to what I would think it would you know, be. So you know, you're gonna have some rusted stuff on there. And there's a little road vignette that I created for it. And let's move on to the next one. So here we have a 135th scale Academy model that I built when I was camping in Morro Bay a few years ago. And I just had a lot of time in my hands and I decided to go ahead and start experimenting with battle damage. And so I pulled out my Dremel, I took all my tools with me and I was drilling holes in the panels and bending them and damaging them. And so I uh, used a lot of weathering techniques in the tracks and on the wheels. I love the way the color came out. and. Um, this is one of my finer examples of the type of boundaries I was trying to push for myself. And as you can see here, it sits on a vignette. This is where I started to learn how to do landscape. And I don't know if it comes across, but it's a very wet looking, muddy track there. And I, I did some uh, kind of wet look by using floor polish. And so uh, there it is, one of my favorites. And we move on. This would probably be my newest tank build, and this is probably one of the most difficult builds I've done. This is a 135th scale, I believe it's called a Yag Panther, and the company is a Japanese company called Nichimo. And this was actually a motorized model kit. I obviously didn't put the motor in it, but what I did do is I experimented with actually using my own Zimmerit. So the Zimmerit is the coating that you see on the sides of the tanks and basically it was a paste that was put on in the field by the Germans to avoid magnetic bombs and um, basically mines and stuff that would stick to it. I don't know how effective it was, but I basically used a wood filler and then used a comb to scrape it off and then finishing it on a tricolor camouflage scheme. I'm really proud of this one. Um, you can see the motor workings down there. Uh, but I spent a lot of time weathering it and then putting the decals was fun because they didn't want to go into the little holes so I had to really use a lot of that decal solution. And there you got the rusted out tailpipes. And this is one of my favorite views right there. So as you can see I like a lot of German tanks. I thought their engineering was spectacular. Maybe the tanks weren't as great in battle because they probably were over-engineered. Got the little tank commander's leaning back. I guess he's getting uh, re too relaxed. You got to get him right ready for the battle again. And let's see what else we have here. And here we have the MA-43 Sherman tank. And this is a Tamiya kit, also in 135th scale. As you can see, I use a lot of the Tamiya powders and a lot of the uh, different weathering techniques to try to make it look like it's, you know, been through a battle. So you can see our tank commander there. This is actually not the uh, larger barrel, the 75 millimeter barrel from the movie F uh, Fury. This is the smaller barrel. But I, I do like the Shermans a lot. They're really cool tanks. And so there you can see a lot of uh, rusting on the tracks and stuff like that. I try to do as much as I can to make it really look like it's been through a battle. Uh, but this one I didn't want to do any battle damage on it so much. So kind of what you see is what you get. I think I saved the best for last. And here is a model I did of three different Volkswagens. Yes, those are all Volkswagens. The one in the front, that is a Kubelwagen. That was a uh, German carrier for the troops. And then you have a swim wagon here behind it. And then you have a staff vehicle. That is one of the first Volkswagens. It was a four wheel drive Volkswagen bug. And I believe that one came out in 1941. And what's cool about this swim wagon here is you can see it was an amphibious vehicle. 
there was a prop behind it so it could go into the water and then come out to the other side, just cross rivers and things like that. So I put all these three VWs on this um, diorama that I made, and this is basically foam that I had cut into different um, little levels and stuff, and then coated the entire thing in plaster cloth, and then used a combination of different foliages, and these rocks here, those are made out of plaster. And then I used some weathering techniques to make them look like rocks that are, would have been under the water in this dry riverbed. And uh, you can see the little cars just basically going through like the commander up there is kind of just making sure all of his troops get through and have a little weathering on these little cars. They're really tiny little 135th scale vehicles, but they're fun to build. And this whole project was really neat. Um, I wish I could do more things like this, but they're just very, very time restrictive. And so unfortunately, I don't get a chance to uh, get this detail to my projects anymore. But uh, there you have it. To me, that would be one of the finest examples um, of a uh, model diorama that I've created. Uh, the trees were purchased. I did not build those myself but everything else I made myself and the, even the sand in that uh, dry riverbed that's out of my backyard I just went out there and found some sand and I think over the years this thing has gotten dustier so it kind of just looks more authentic now than it did when I first built it well I hope you guys enjoy the show and tell um, I thought it'd be kind of fun because I know a lot of us slot car guys we are also die cast guys and we are also model builders and landscape creators so it, it kind of ties all in together to the slot car community that i belong to and so anyway hope you guys enjoyed it and i guess i will see you on the next one i'll promise not to make my next one too long either if you like this type of content please hit that like button and maybe subscribe also leave a comment if you feel the need and hit that little notification bell see you in the next one